For an elementary calculus based introduction, see Divergent series on Wikiversity. In mathematics, a divergent series is an infinite series that is not convergent, meaning that the infinite sequence of the partial sums of the series does not have a finite limit. If a series converges, the individual terms of the series must approach zero. Thus any series in which the individual terms do not approach zero diverges. However, convergence is a stronger condition, not all series whose terms approach zero converge. A counterexample is the harmonic series 1 plus 1 2 plus 1 3 plus 1 4 plus 1 5 plus equals n equals 1 infinity 1 n display style 1 plus frac 1 2 plus frac 1 3 plus frac 1 4 plus frac 1 5 plus c d o t s equals sum underscore n equals 1 caret n f t frac 1 n the divergence of the harmonic series was proven by the medieval mathematician nicole oresme in specialized mathematical contexts, values can be objectively assigned to certain series whose sequences of partial sums diverge, in order to make meaning of the divergence of the series. A summability method or summation method is a partial function from the set of series to values. For example, Cesaro summation assigns Grandi's divergent series 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus display style 1 to 1 plus 1 to 1 plus c d o t s the value 1 half Cesaro summation as an averaging method in that it relies on the arithmetic mean of the sequence of partial sums other methods involve analytic continuations of related series in physics, there are a wide variety of summability methods, these are discussed in greater detail in the article on regularization. History Before the 19th century, divergent series were widely used by Leonard Euler and others, but often led to confusing and contradictory results. A major problem was Euler's idea that any divergent series should have a natural sum, without first defining what is meant by the sum of a divergent series. Augustin Louis Cauchy eventually gave a rigorous definition of the sum of a convergent series, and for some time after this, divergent series were mostly excluded from mathematics. They reappeared in 1886 with Henri Poincaré's work on asymptotic series. In 1890, Ernesto Cesaro realized that one could give a rigorous definition of the sum of some divergent series, and define Cesaro summation. This was not the first use of Cesaro summation, which was used implicitly by Ferdinand Georg Frobenius in 1880. Cesaro's key contribution was not the discovery of this method, but his idea that one should give an explicit definition of the sum of a divergent series. In the years after Cesaro's paper, several other mathematicians gave other definitions of the sum of a divergent series, although these are not always compatible, different definitions can give different answers for the sum of the same divergent series, so, when talking about the sum of a divergent series, it is necessary to specify which summation method one is using. Examples <laughs> 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 1 to 1 plus 1 to 1 plus equals display style equals 1 2 display style frac 1 2 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus equals display style equals 1 4 display style frac 1 4 
1 minus 1 plus 2 minus 6 plus 24 minus 120 plus equals display style equals 0 infinity e minus x 1 plus x d x approximately equals 0 0.596 347 Display style in underscore zero carrot in a t f r a c e carrot x one plus x d x approximately zero five hundred ninety six three hundred forty seven l dots one minus two plus four minus eight plus equals display style equals one three display style f r a c one three 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus equals display style equals minus 1 display style minus 1 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus equals display style equals minus 1 2 display style frac 1 2 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus equals display style equals minus 1 12 display style frac 1 12 topic theorems on methods for summing divergent series A summability method M is regular if it agrees with the actual limit on all convergent series. Such a result is called an abelian theorem for M, from the prototypical Abel's theorem. More interesting, and in general more subtle, are partial converse results, called Tauberian theorems, from a prototype proved by Alfred Tauber. Here partial converse means that if M sums the series σ, and some side condition holds, then σ was convergent in the first place, without any side condition such a result would say that M only summed convergent series making it useless as a summation method for divergent series. The function giving the sum of a convergent series is linear, and it follows from the hahn banach theorem that it may be extended to a summation method summing any series with bounded partial sums. This is called the Banach limit. This fact is not very useful in practice, since there are many such extensions, inconsistent with each other, and also since proving such operators exist requires invoking the axiom of choice or its equivalence, such as Zorn's lemma. They are therefore nonconstructive. The subject of divergent series, as a domain of mathematical analysis, is primarily concerned with explicit and natural techniques such as Abel summation, Cesaro summation and Borel summation, and their relationships. The advent of Wiener's Tauberian theorem marked an epoch in the subject, introducing unexpected connections to Banach algebra methods in Fourier analysis. Summation of divergent series is also related to extrapolation methods and sequence transformations as numerical techniques. Examples of such techniques are Padé approximants, Levin-type sequence transformations, and order-dependent mappings related to renormalization techniques for large-order perturbation theory in quantum mechanics. Topic: <laughs> Properties of summation methods. Summation methods usually concentrate on the sequence of partial sums of the series. While this sequence does not converge, we may often find that when we take an average of larger and larger numbers of initial terms of the sequence, the average converges, and we can use this average instead of a limit to evaluate the sum of the series. A summation method can be seen as a function from a set of sequences of partial sums to values. If A is any summation method assigning values to a set of sequences, we may mechanically translate this to a series summation method A sigma that assigns the same values to the corresponding series. 
there are certain properties it is desirable for these methods to possess if they are to arrive at values corresponding to limits and sums, respectively. Regularity. A summation method is regular if, whenever the sequence S converges to X, S. Topic X. Equivalently, the corresponding series summation method evaluates a sigma a x linearity. A is linear if it is a linear functional on the sequences where it is defined, so that a k r plus s. Topic. K A R plus as for sequences R, S and a real or complex scalar K. Since the terms N plus 1 S N plus 1 minus S N of the series are linear functionals on the sequence S and vice versa, this is equivalent to A sigma being a linear functional on the terms of the series. Stability also called translativity. If S is a sequence starting from S0 and S is the sequence obtained by omitting the first value and subtracting it from the rest, so that S in S n plus 1 minus S0, then as is defined if and only if A S is defined, and as S0 plus A S equivalently whenever a n topic n plus 1 for all n then a sigma a a 0 plus a sigma a another way of stating this is that the shift rule must be valid for the series that are summable by this method the third condition is less important and some significant methods such as Borel summation do not possess it one can also give a weaker alternative to the last condition a desirable property for two distinct summation methods a and b to share as consistency a and b are consistent if for every sequence s to which both assign a value as equals b's if two methods are consistent, and one sums more series than the other, the one summing more series is stronger. There are powerful numerical summation methods that are neither regular nor linear, for instance nonlinear sequence transformations like Levin-type sequence transformations and Pade approximants, as well as the order-dependent mappings of perturbative series based on renormalization techniques. Taking regularity, linearity and stability as axioms, it is possible to sum many divergent series by elementary algebraic manipulations. This partly explains why many different summation methods give the same answer for certain series. For instance, whenever R does not equal 1, the geometric series G R C equals K equals zero infinity C R K equals C plus K equals zero infinity C R K plus one stability equals C plus R K equals zero infinity C R K linearity equals C plus R G R C hence G R C equals C one minus R unless it is infinite. Display style begin aligned G R C and equals sum underscore k equals zero caret in a t C R caret k and an and equals C plus sum underscore k equals zero caret in a t C R caret k plus one and an text stability and equals C plus R sum underscore k equals zero caret in a t C R 
caret k and n text linearity and equals c plus r g r c and n text hence g r c and equals frac c one r text unless it is infinite and an end aligned can be evaluated regardless of convergence. More rigorously, any summation method that possesses these properties and which assigns a finite value to the geometric series must assign this value. However, when r is a real number larger than 1, the partial sums increase without bound, and averaging methods assign a limit of infinity. Classical summation methods The two classical summation methods for series, ordinary convergence and absolute convergence, define the sum as a limit of certain partial sums. These are included only for completeness, strictly speaking they are not true summation methods for divergent series since, by definition, a series is divergent only if these methods do not work. Most but not all summation methods for divergent series extend these methods to a larger class of sequences. Topic. Absolute convergence Absolute convergence defines the sum of a sequence or set of numbers to be the limit of the net of all partial sums ak1 plus plus akn, if it exists. It does not depend on the order of the elements of the sequence, and a classical theorem says that a sequence is absolutely convergent if and only if the sequence of absolute values is convergent in the standard sense. <laughs> Sum of a series Cauchy's classical definition of the sum of a series A0 plus A1 plus defines the sum to be the limit of the sequence of partial sums a0 plus plus n. This is the default definition of convergence of a sequence. Norland means Suppose Pn is a sequence of positive terms, starting from P0. Suppose also that P N P zero plus P one plus plus P N zero Display style FRAC P underscore N P underscore zero plus P underscore one plus C D O T S plus P underscore N right arrow zero if now we transform a sequence S by using P to give weighted means, setting T M equals P M S zero plus P M minus one S one plus plus P Zero S M P zero plus P one plus plus P M Display style T underscore M equals FRAC P underscore M S underscore zero plus P underscore M one S underscore one plus C D O T S plus P underscore zero S underscore M P underscore zero plus P underscore one plus C D O T S plus P underscore M then the limit of T N as N goes to infinity is an average called the Norland mean N P's. The Norland mean is regular, linear, and stable. Moreover, any two Norland means are consistent. Topic: <coughs> Cesaro summation. The most significant of the Norland means are the Cesaro sums. Here, if we define the sequence P K by P N K equals n plus 
K minus one K minus one Display style p underscore n caret k equals n plus k minus one. Choose k one. Then the Cesaro sum c k is defined by c k's equals n p k s. Cesaro sums are Norland means if k zero, and hence are regular, linear, stable, and consistent. C o is ordinary summation, and c one is ordinary Cesaro summation. Cesaro sums have the property that if h greater than k, then ch is stronger than ck. Equals. Topic: Abelian means. Topic: Suppose lambda. Lambda zero, lambda one, lambda two is a strictly increasing sequence tending towards infinity, and that lambda zero zero. Suppose f x equals n equals zero infinity a n exp minus lambda n x display style f x equals sum underscore n equals zero caret n f t a underscore n e x p lambda underscore n x converges for all real numbers x greater than zero. Then the abelian mean a lambda is defined as a lambda s equals lim x zero plus F x Displaystyle A underscore lambda S equals lim underscore x right arrow zero carat plus F x. More generally, if the series for F only converges for large x but can be analytically continued to all positive real x, then one can still define the sum of the divergent series by the limit above. A series of this type is known as a generalized Dirichlet series. In applications to physics, this is known as the method of heat kernel regularization. Abelian means are regular and linear, but not stable and not always consistent between different choices of lambda. However, some special cases are very important summation methods. Topic: Abel summation. If lambda n equals n, then we obtain the method of Abel summation. Here, f x equals n equals zero infinity a n e minus n x equals n equals Zero infinity a n z n display style f x equals sum underscore n equals zero caret n f t a underscore n e caret n x equals sum underscore n equals zero caret n f t a underscore n z caret n where z equals e x p minus x then the limit of f x as x approaches zero through positive reals as the limit of the power series for f z as z approaches one from below through positive reals, and the Abel sum as is defined as a s equals lim z one minus n equals zero infinity a n z n display style as equals lim underscore z right arrow one caret sum underscore n equals zero caret n f t a underscore n z caret n. Abel summation is interesting in part because it is consistent with but more powerful than Cesaro summation as equals c k s whenever the latter is defined.
The Abel sum is therefore regular, linear, stable, and consistent with Cesaro summation. Equals. Topic: Lindelof summation. Topic: If lambda n. n log n then indexing from 1 we have f x equals o 1 plus o 2 2 minus 2 x plus o 3 3 minus 3 x Plus display style f x equals a underscore one plus a underscore two two carrot two x plus a underscore three three carrot three x plus c d o t s. Then else the Lindelof sum Volkov two thousand one is the limit of f x as x goes to positive zero. The Lindelof sum is a powerful method when applied to power series, among other applications, summing power series in the mittig leffler star. If G Z is analytic in a disk around zero, and hence has a Maclaurin series G Z with a positive radius of convergence, then L G Z equals G Z in the mittig leffler star. Moreover, convergence to G Z is uniform on compact subsets of the star. Equals. Topic: Analytic continuation. Equals. Several summation methods involve taking the value of an analytic continuation of a function. Equals. Topic: Analytic continuation of power series. Topic: If sigma a n x n converges for small complex x and can be analytically continued along some path from x zero to the point x. Topic: One. Then the sum of the series can be defined to be the value at x one. This value may depend on the choice of path. Topic: Euler summation. Euler summation is essentially an explicit form of analytic continuation. If a power series converges for small complex z and can be analytically continued to the open disk with diameter from minus 1, q plus 1 to 1 and is continuous at 1, then its value at is called the Euler or e q sum of the series A0 plus. Euler used it before analytic continuation was defined in general, and gave explicit formulas for the power series of the analytic continuation. The operation of Euler summation can be repeated several times, and this is essentially equivalent to taking an analytic continuation of a power series to the point z equals one equals topic analytic continuation of Dirichlet series equals. This method defines the sum of a series to be the value of the analytic continuation of the Dirichlet series. F S equals a one one S plus a two two S plus a three three S plus display style F S equals F R A C a underscore one one carrot S plus F R A C a underscore two two carrot S plus F R A C a underscore three three carrot S plus C D O T S 
at s equals zero, if this exists and is unique. This method is sometimes confused with zeta function regularization. If s equals zero is an isolated singularity, the sum is defined by the constant term of the Laurent series expansion. Equals. Topic: Zeta function regularization. Equals. If the series f s equals one a one s plus one a two s plus one a three s plus Display style f s equals frac one a underscore one carrot s plus frac one a underscore two carrot s plus frac one a underscore three carrot s plus c d o t s. For positive values of the n converges for large real s and can be analytically continued along the real line to s. Topic. Minus one, then its value at s. Minus one is called the zeta regularized sum of the series a one plus a two plus. Zeta function regularization is nonlinear. In applications, the numbers i are sometimes the eigenvalues of a self-adjoint operator a with compact resolvent, and f s is then the trace of a minus s. For example, if A has eigenvalues 1, 2, 3, then Fs is the Riemann zeta function, zeta s, whose value at s. Topic minus 1 is minus 1 twelfth, assigning a value to the divergent series 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus. Other values of s can also be used to assign values for the divergent sums zeta zero one plus one plus one plus. <laughs>